Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 852nd Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. And just to say, um, I've downloaded a map pack, and we've been fighting on a lot of custom maps lately. And this is one of them. This map, as you can see, has got woods here um, for people to hide their troops and spring those nasty ambushes. If you notice here, the middle of the map tends to rise around this rock here. And you can fight around that rock. That makes it quite interesting, as you will see when the battle unfolds. And once again, more woods here, look. So you can, as I said, hide your troops and then spring those nasty ambushes. But as you can see, there's big open plains as well that you can fight on if you want. Here by the rock, you'll see that the ground dips in some places and raises and rises in others there. So there you are. Let you see if you could deploy there. Look, can you see you might have a downhill advantage there? So as I say, this is uh, one of our new custom maps, and uh, I hope it um, makes the battle even more interesting there. As I say there, you can deploy there, look, where you're on higher ground as well. So um, as I say, it's, it's quite an interesting uh, custom map, this one, and uh, for the feedback I got back from the players, they seem to enjoy this map, so uh, we'll be playing on it a bit more. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Man 2. Now, Man 2's got 14 infantry and 6 cavalry, the bog standard 31k Roman army. 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. And the reason that's the bog standard 31k Roman army is because it's so effective and so efficient. Quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry, and he just got gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry there. So it'll be interesting to see how he uses that army during the course of the battle. Our next teammate is Brotherhood member Vicox. Now Vicox got 10 Sacred Band Spearmen, 4 Slingers and 6 Cavalry. Have a look at the upgrades on his Sacred Band Spearmen. You'll see he's got 8 upgrades, 2 Experience Stripes, Gold Shield, Gold Attack. Remember these Sacred Band Spearmen are really good infantry. You put 2 um, Experience Stripes on them and they make them pretty tough. Quick look at his cavalry, and you'll see he's got seven upgrades. An experienced strike, gold shield, gold attack on his sacred band cavalry. So that's a pretty good Carthage army there. I think that's a tried and tested Carthage army. Our next teammate is someone who's called himself OTD Chimrazig, but is in fact Scorpion King SR. Now he's got six cavalry, five archers, and nine infantry. Okay. So six cavalry, five archers, nine infantry. As I say, um, he always brings uh, builds custom armies for every single battle. You see, his infantry's got gold shield, gold attack. He's got no saved armies at all. A quick look at his cavalry, and you see he's got eight upgrades on two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. There, um, and then other units of his cavalry has got seven upgrades on an experience stripe, gold shield, gold, gold attack. So he's got mixed upgrades on his cavalry. There. And as I say, um, he, uh, he's got no saved armies. He builds a custom army for every battle. And our last teammate is myself. Spartan Commander's got a very old Roman army. I've got 12 infantry, 2 archers, and 6 cavalry. Okay, 12 infantry, 2 archers, and 6 cavalry. So there's our team. Uh, he's got the potential to be a cracking battle on this new custom map. And here is the other team. We have Titan's Spitfire here, who's brought the Macedon faction. Now he's got 12 pikes, 5 cavalry, and 2 archers. So that's 12 pikes, 5 cavalry, and 2 archers. And here we have a quick look at the, uh, look at the long pikes there that our troops have got to try and fight down to kill the man on the other end. And just to say, I've noticed Spitfire is very good with Macedon in other battles that we played. You'll see that his uh, cavalry and his archers are hiding in the woods there. Be interesting to see how he handles Macedon in this battle. Um, their next teammate is RTW player Luke. Now Luke has got seven archers, seven infantry, and six cavalry. Okay, seven archers, seven infantry, six cavalry. Okay, now I'm just looking at the upgrades on his infantry. He just got gold shield, gold attack on his infantry. Now, I would ask you the question, is 7 infantry enough for the modern day battlefield? Now, if you look at his cavalry, you'll see he's got 8 upgrades on, 2 experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. So he's certainly got well upgraded cavalry there. But as I say, 7 infantry, is that enough for the modern day battlefield? What do you think? It'll be interesting to see um, as the battle unfolds. A lot of people have said this type of army is, is more CWB based, but I don't know what you think about that. 
Her next teammate is RTW player Amanda. Now Amanda's got seven archers, seven infantry, and six cavalry. Uh, you're, once again, it's a mirror army of Lukes there. And, but the only difference is that you can see the cavalry is fully upgraded. Three experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So that lifts this cavalry out of the elite bracket into the super cavalry bracket there. And I say once again, there are only seven infantry. Um, as I say, that, I think that is an Achilles heel of this particular army, just seven infantry. Um, the next teammate is RTW player Cornova Tribe, and Cornova Tribe has got six archers, three spearmen, three berserkers, and six cavalry. And there you go, there's the chosen archers there. And this a spear war band here, you don't see this unit bought very often um, in a Germania army on the modern day battlefield, but those spears are obviously anti-cavalry, and you'd be surprised on how well this unit will do it can hold up infantry as well um, back in the day most Germanic generals bought these units because they knew how good they are but uh, it's rare to see these units um, on as I say in uh, a modern Germanic uh, army and he's only put gold shield gold attack upgrades on them usually they need better upgrades than that but it'll be interesting to see how well he handles them during the course of the battle and there you are if you notice there there's his cavalry he's got his gothic cavalry there but if you look closely, can you see anything interesting amongst his cavalry? I'm going to show you a very old school, uh, old fashioned tactic here. Have a close look. Can you see anything in his cavalry there? Okay, so we're going to have a close look. If you notice there, you'll see berserkers. Now he's hidden his berserkers in his cavalry. This is a tactic that was used maybe 17, 18 years ago. People used to do that because you could just look at his cavalry, miss the berserkers and think, oh, he's just got no berserkers. Uh, remember these berserkers have got um, effective against armor maces, big attacking specifications, uh, two hit points and a massive fear factor. But I just thought it was interesting showing you an old school, old fashioned hiding tactic of the berserkers there. And as I say, if you didn't look closely, you could miss those berserkers were hiding in the cavalry. So that tactic could still be effective even today. This should be a great battle for you to watch. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have an archer count, as that may well prove very important during the course of the battle. You'll see that Spitfire had just got two archer units there. Okay. And we're going to move up to Luke. Luke's got seven archers, okay? So that's nine archers altogether. Him and Spit so far, that's nine archers. Okay. And we're going to move on to Amanda there. And Amanda's got seven archers as well. So that's 16 archers so far. Okay, so the enemy team have got 16 archers so far. And then Cornovoy's got another six archers there. So the enemy have got 22 archer units. Okay, 22 archer units there. And uh, I'm just saying, I'm, I haven't played CWB uh, rules for many, many years, but I got a, a faint memory of them being very archer and um, well upgraded cavalry armies there. It seems like the, like maybe these armies, these Roman armies especially, are like CWB armies that have been kind of converted to um, 31k armies. I don't know what you think about that. Um, as I say, I've played CWB for many years. Okay, and then let's have a look at our archers. Right, I've got two archers. I think uh, Scorpion King has got five, so that's seven. That's seven archers so far. Okay. So that's seven archers between us, and then four slingers. So we've actually got 11 uh, missile units against their 22. Now, I wonder if that's going to make a difference. So we've got uh, 11 combination of archers and slingers, and they've got 22 elite archers. Could that make a difference? Okay, this very, very early stage of the battle, you'll see a Scorpion King is laying his credentials on the table straight away, right from the beginning of the battle. He is going to be aggressive and attacking there. Can you see he's taking his nine infantry over towards Luke's seven infantry? Now, it wouldn't surprise me if Luke backed his infantry off. There you go. As I say, with these seven infantry armies, the Achilles heel to me is just just that seven infantry the moment a bigger army approaches you the only thing you could do is pull back because otherwise the pilers 
that uh, you'll receive will weaken your army even more. So, um, as I say, that's why he looks back at his infantry off there, because a bigger army is approaching him there. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what Scorpion King is going to do on this flank. As I say, you can see Luke uh, pulling back there. It wouldn't surprise me if Scorpion King advanced a little bit further there, which he's doing. As I say, you can see right from the beginning of this battle, Scorpion King's uh, going to be very aggressive there. And if you notice there, can you see now that Scorpion King is on the slightly higher ground now that Luke has just retreated from there. So that was a, that was a nice aggressive uh, movement, I think, there by Scorpion King. Over here on our left flank, you'll see that Amanda's got um, archers there ready to shoot at us if we move forward. It'll be interesting to see where Vicox is going to position his uh, Carthaginian troops there. But as I say, Scorpion King now has got a slightly higher ground there by the side of that rock. And if you notice there, his left flank is completely um, secured by that rock there. So um, that's quite a handy thing to have. There you are, Scorpion King moving forward again, look. Very, very aggressively there. As I say, you can see Luke backing his archers off now. And Scorpion King moving forward very, very uh, quickly. It'll be interesting to see what Scorpion King's going to do with his um, cavalry there. He may well link up with Man 2 uh, there on that particular flank. Now, this surprised me here that Vicox is moving his Carthaginians towards the enemy Julio army there. Because bearing in mind that that Julio infantry could throw in loads of pilers to um, cause him casualties, I was surprised at that. And don't forget, archers here can also cause those Carthaginian um, sacred band spearmen casualties as well. So uh, I was quite surprised, as I say, that Vicos decided to be so aggressive against a Rome opponent there. But as you can see, he's being, he is being very aggressive. As I say, the Julii archers here may well target his, uh, his spearmen. You can see those uh, arrows coming in onto his units there. Or um, the Julio archers may well target his um, Balearic slingers. That's what they might go for first. And here you can see um, Vicox attacking with his Sacred Band cavalry. Note that he's got his cavalry in open order. Remember, like we've talked about before in other battle videos, if your units are in open order, they suffer less casualties from missiles. That's why he's got his... Uh, Sacred Band Cavalry in open order. My guess is he's going to back his cavalry off now. There you go. Because he can see the uh, fully upgraded cavalry of Julii coming towards him there. So a good tactical move there by uh, Vicox to back them off. But as I say, um, I'm just a little bit worried about him taking a lot of casualties there from enemy archers onto his um, spearmen. But once again, can you see he's got the higher ground there. Notice on either side of the rock, you've got slightly higher, um, higher ground. Now over here you'll see that um, Spitfire there is moving his pikes forward maybe to engage Scorpion King is what he wants to do there. But uh, he's got his archers in the woods there and you can see Luke has got his archers in the woods as well. So it looks to me the way that Scorpion King's moving infantry over to this right flank as well as his cavalry, he is going to go on an archer hunt in amongst those trees. That's what it looks like to me. If you notice there, can you see he's moving infantry and cavalry towards these trees here? He knows the enemy have got lots of archers in those trees. And as I say, I think he's going on an archer hunt there with his uh, cavalry and infantry. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me if Man 2 actually um, jumped in there with his cavalry as well. Because I think... Um, there's a lot of benefits here with advancing with cavalry and infantry in taking out to a lot of the enemy archers there. And there you are, you can see, as I say, um, Scorpion King moving his cavalry forward with some infantry units. Pause again for a second there. But as I say, it wouldn't surprise me if Man 2 joined in as well, so they could have a joint cavalry infantry um, mop up, if you like, of the enemy archers there. Okay, so that would be a good tactical move here. Taking the battle to the enemy. There's an infantry, let's see. You take the battle to the infantry and you grab the initiative. If you just stand back, the enemy has the initiative and you can only react to them. So well done, the Scorpion King there, very aggressive. You can see that Man 2's infantry and my infantry have come over to this left flank. As I say, you can see Vicox there 
facing both Luke's infantry as well as the Julio infantry there. So, um, as I say, just hope they don't get too close and start throwing loads, loads of pilers into his forward units there. His Balearic slingers are having uh, quite a deadly exchange with the uh, enemy archers there. Be interesting to see who comes off best there. And over here, as I say, there you are. Look, you can see Mantu has now joined in with Scorpion King. Nice bit of teamwork there by Mantu and Scorpion King. Now they've got all their cavalry, plus they've got infantry units in there as well, which is going to make it very difficult for the enemy uh, there with just archers and some cavalry there to defend those archers. So as I say, both Mantu and Scorpion King being very, very aggressive, taking the battle to the enemy, grabbing the initiative. Right, now over here you'll see that those companion cavalry that were hiding in the woods, um, Spitfire now has decided to bring them out of hiding, maybe to attack um, Mantu's and Scorpion King's cavalry in the flank, or maybe just to pull those cavalry back because he was worried that they might have been discovered there. You can see them actually moving them back at the moment there so uh, as I say Scorpion King and Mantu great team up there uh, but they need to be aware of all that enemy cavalry remember Luke's cavalry is very well upgraded um, as well and those companion cavalry I think they've got, got quite good upgrades on as well so they need to be careful here but they've got infantry in the fray as well so as I say mopping up archers is what they look like they're going to do pause the game for a second here so the St. Mantu and Scorpion King's cavalry backed up with um, infantry there trying to take out these archers. As I say, um, in these particular battles here where um, enemies bring a lot of archers, if you just stand back and go defensive, that's just what they want you to do because they'll move their archers around to target your troops. So uh, being aggressive and attacking these type of armies is the best thing to do. As I say, grab the initiative and the enemy can only react to you. They've kind of got a dance to your tune. Notice Scorpion King's left infantry and archers there to guard that particular part of the battlefield. And then a good tactical move there by Scorpion King. And you can see I've taken my Roman army forward there with Vicoxes because he's facing like, if you like, three armies there. Julii, Brutii and Germania. And you'll notice here that uh, Mantu is holding his infantry back in reserve where he can then place them uh, either over by Scorpion King or help us here on this left flank. So that's a, a nice tactical move there by Mantu with his infantry. But as I say here you can see the Julii archers there. Um, as I say I think they're shooting into the Balearic Slingers looking at the casualties that the Balearic Slingers have suffered here. That's who um, the Julii archers are concentrating on at the moment. Try and take the Balearic Slingers out and then concentrate on the Sacred Band Spearmen is what I'm thinking they're doing. Meanwhile, over here, in amongst the trees, you'll see Scorpion King, as I say, and Mantu with their cavalry trying to hoover up um, the archers of the enemy team there. Okay, so as I say, nice aggressive move there by the two of them. Might be a good idea to pull back now, maybe. There, because there's a lot of enemy cavalry massed there, looking to maybe hit individual cavalry units there. So, as I say, might be a good idea to maybe pull cavalry back now. And that uh, looks like what they're going to do. As I say, meanwhile, over here, you see the Macedonian pikeman. Now, whether he's thinking about maybe attacking that position there, seeing how Scorpion King's um, got infantry and cavalry away from the main army there that's what he may well do you'll see here that the julio general is bringing those archers forward there i think to try and target um, my archers and the balearic slingers as much as they can there you'll see my archers there shooting into the julio um, archers there as well so i'm giving a good reply there with my two archers against those uh, those julio archers and as i say you can see mantu's infantry in reserve and as I say here, I think Man 2 and Scorpion King have done well there with what they've um, taken out. There you can still see some infantry of Scorpion Kings there. But uh, it might be a good idea now just to pull their cavalry back. I think they've routed a lot of enemy archers there. So that was good. Say a good aggressive move there by the two of them. And good a good teamwork move as well. But here you can see Titan Spitfire and Luke's um, cavalry here of... Um, kind of grouped as well so well done to them good bit of teamwork by them as well 
and you can see there that we're starting to back our teammates are starting to back off their uh, their cavalry now but that was a nice move by Scorpion King taking his infantry some infantry units forward as well to assist the cavalry that makes it even more difficult for the enemy team so that's good news there They say in a lot of our battles you might see sometime our teams kind of go defensive and of course the moment you go defensive you hand the initiative to the enemy and especially with these um, armies where they got seven archers they can move those archers around and target your troops quite easily so attack very often is a good thing to do take the battle to the enemy and as I said before grab the initiative you can see there Luke like he was going to come in on the flank of our um, allies cavalry there and as I say you can see our allies cavalry now pulling back to their original start point now because they've done the damage that they wanted to to the enemy archers now remember that the Julio cavalry we looked at earlier is fully upgraded three experienced stripes gold shield gold attack so this is what surprised me was that a uh, Vicox with his sacred band cavalry with only seven upgrades on is trying to attack the Julii cavalry here that's that really did surprise me because obviously Praetorian cavalry is better than sacred band cavalry anyway in general um, and it's fully upgraded as well so that did surprise me I say meanwhile over on our right flank here you can see that um, looks like uh, man 2 and scorpion king are just um, kind of forming up now they've done the damage they wanted to let's pause again for a second here so I notice there's a couple of I think it's man 2's cavalry units all the way over here ah oh, there you go they must be just chasing down archer units at the moment but man 2 needs to be careful with these two cavalry units because I'm guessing that the enemy team will spot those two as uh, isolated cavalry units and maybe look to take them out so man two needs to be careful with those let's say he's got his uh, three infantry units there if you notice the right and they were hiding there so um hopefully the enemy will forget about them being there let's say meanwhile over on our left flank there you notice here I'm, I'm taking my cavalry out here to help Vicox's sacred band cavalry against his fully upgraded Julio cavalry now would it surprise me if the Julio general pulled that cavalry back on seeing my SBQR cavalry moving towards it there obviously it would be outnumbered there with the sacred band cavalry and my cavalry so he's pulled back and I thought this was uh, a good little uh, bit of defensive there by um, bit defensive there by Vicox with his spears but over here as I say you can see there that um, the Julio General is pulling that cavalry back but I can also see some gothic germanic cavalry moving towards us as well so it might be a good, good idea for Voicox and myself to back our cavalry off at this stage of the battle okay right let's just pause the game for a second here now, as i say here this is a nice defensive uh, spear wall here that Voicox has put up there to defend our armies there with his spears but if you notice here luke is moving his brutio infantry forward now can you think why he wants to do that of course he wants to get close so he can throw his pilers in to those um carthage sacred band spear units there okay that's the reason he's moving close there almost point blank range and then he's going to throw the pilers in there to do the maximum damage to those carthage sacred band units now as you notice there you'll see vicox have got those sacred band units in open order like we talked about earlier units in open order suffer less casualties from missiles there that's why he's got those units in open order but make no mistake at point blank range which is what those pilots being thrown in they will be causing damage to those sacred band units If you notice there you'll see that man 2 is moving some of his infantry forward and luke now backs his infantry off because once again with only seven infantry he knows that he's going to get a load of pilots thrown into him look at uh, vicox is aggression here with his uh, carthage sacred band units there move forward there once again the brutti general luke had to back his infantry off because of the numbers there 
as I say, you can see the Julio General there, cavalry ready. You can see my cavalry locked and loaded as well. So there could be a cavalry scrap a little bit later on. But over here, you'll see, as I say, that Man 2's cavalry and Scorpion King's archers, cavalry and some infantry there are watching what Luke and um, Spitfire's cavalry are doing over there. And if you notice here, can you see that the Macedonian general is moving his pikes forward? Now, he spotted the Scorpion King's only got four infantry units there on the side of that rock. So he's moving his pikes forward there with a view possibly to attack. Now, here you'll see that the Julio general and the Brutio general there look to me like they're merging their infantry there. And I can still see lots of pilots being thrown into those Carthage Sacred Band units there by the Brutio general. Okay. Now, you can see my SPQ or cavalry there. I see that Julio infantry moving towards me. And I think it would be a prudent move to move my cavalry away from those Julio infantry as I don't want a load of pilots thrown into my cavalry. So, uh, come on, need to move that cavalry back before that infantry gets too close. That's it. Move that cavalry back quick, quick, quick. Don't want those pilots being thrown into my, uh, into my cavalry there. Now, if you notice here, you'll see Luke has put his infantry into Testudo. Remember, this is a proper formation used by the Romans back in the day. If you look there, it's completely... The men inside that Testudo are completely covered by their shields. So, missile damage is going to be absolute minimal onto those units there. And if I remember correctly, I believe I was quite aggressive in this battle there. And I remember thinking, right, I'm going to advance onto those Testudo units there just to see what the enemy will do if we do that. And, of course, what I'd like to do is kill the general there. That's the unit that I would really like to hit there. Kill the general, take the morale bonus away from the, uh, the enemy team there. Okay. But if I do advance in there, I could w need to watch my flanks, I think. Okay, so here you'll see the Scorpion King has been forced to move his four uh, SPQR infantry units back because of the sheer weight of numbers of those Macedonian pikes. So we have now ceded the higher ground here on this particular flank um, of that rock there. As I say, you'll see they are on the higher ground now, those Macedonian pikemen. And as I say, here you'll see my infantry surging forward. Okay, to surround those um, Brutio units in Testudo. Now, I'm not sure that's a good tactical move by myself because the moment I've done that, my flanks are exposed to a hit. If you notice here, my troops are attacking those Testudo units. Luke's taking those units out of Testudo. But you can see a lot of enemy cavalry there ready to charge in. Plus, don't forget those Berserkers are hiding among the cavalry. Plus here, remember that the Julio General's cavalry here is fully upgraded, okay? And that could also be a nasty flank attack into my troops, okay? So um, this could be an interesting part of the battle here. I say I've got my cavalry over there. I need them really to be pushed, positioned behind, behind my infantry to support my infantry if needed, okay? But as I say, at the moment, my army is very, very susceptible to flank attacks. And make no mistake, the Julio General spotted that. And those fully upgraded Praetorian cavalry are going to smash into the side of my infantry. But I'm going to counter that cavalry attack with my infantry there. If you notice there, I'm turning my infantry to attack that cavalry there. So it's um, charge bonus of cavalry against charge bonus of infantry there. Just trying to absorb that cavalry hit. Okay, so you can see there, but you can see there's three more fully upgraded Julioi cavalry ready to attack as well. You can see Germanic um, cavalry there, I see at the back, and you can see the Germanic general moving his spear units right, right here. Goes that fully upgraded Julioi cavalry, and bang! As it smashes into my units, right, you can see my cavalry has now arrived, and I'm charging into that Julioi cavalry, and Bang! As my cavalry smashes into that Julio cavalry there. Wouldn't surprise me if the Julio cavalry backed off, which is what it's doing now. But you can see the spearmen there of Germania moving forward. As I say, a very underestimated unit these days. 
but to good anti-cavalry um, units there. And once again, you'll see the berserkers there. Now, if you count the upgrades on these berserkers, one, two, three, four, five, fully upgraded berserkers, three experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on these berserkers. Make no mistake, these units are arguably the most powerful units in the game and fully upgraded. Oh my gosh. I mean, I just can't believe the power that those units are going to bring to the battlefield there. And of course, with their massive fear factor, I think there's a chance that my army could well mass rout. Okay, that's what's worrying me now. Right, let's pause the game for a second here. So, at the rear here, you'll see that the Macedonian general is advancing with his pikemen there, um, keeping these units here occupied of um, Scorpion King. And also, they're watching Amansu and Scorpion King are watching the enemy cavalry as well. Okay, so they're watching those as well. You can see Luke has moved his cavalry over here. Looks like he's bringing it back into the fray there. He may well hide those cavalry in the woods, hoping that we won't notice them, and then maybe look to bring them into the fray when he's ready there. I would think that the flank of Man 2's infantry could be a good target for his cavalry there. Do you see what I mean? He comes out the woods there and smashes into the flank, especially if the Julio General's attacking at the same time. But meanwhile, over here, you'll see the MySPQR army is certainly being attacked here by a Gothic cavalry charging in there. And bang, there's that Gothic cavalry charging in there. You'll notice here that um, Vicox has brought, I think, a couple of his Sacred Band spearmen over here as well. And I think Man 2 brings a couple of his infantry units over to help as well. If we could happen to destroy the Germanic army now, then that would be a great thing for us to do here. But uh, as I say, with those Berserker units, and they have been now been activated, see the red banners flashing there? Those Berserkers have now been activated, and they're charging in. You can see one of Vicox's spear units has already been routed there, and you can see all the pressure now coming in on my SBQR infantry there. Okay, a heck of a lot of pressure coming in there from those Germanic troops, especially those fully upgraded Berserkers. But here you'll see Vicox bringing a couple of his spear units over as well to help out. I've got my cavalry locked and loaded, and Vicox has got his cavalry locked and loaded as well, that we will be charging in. But as I say, the Macedonian general here, Spitfire, is moving his uh, troops forward as well, keeping those SBQR alloys of ours uh, pinned and held there. But oh my gosh, just look at that massive Germanic attack there. And here goes my cavalry, right? I'm gonna charge my cavalry in there. And you can see that charging in there. Ah. Bang! As my cavalry smashes into that uh, Germanic horde there. Now remember that uh, Germanic units there, the spear units there, will be holding quite well. But I'm hoping to be able to uh, cause some casualties. There goes the Carthaginian cavalry, look. And bang! As he smashes in there. Now he was going for the Germanic general, which happens to be a berserker unit. Did you see the trajectory of that cavalry? Straight in for that Germanic general. Now this is a nice move by Man 2. He's brought his cavalry round the back of the rock and he's going to smash into the rear of those engaged Germanic infantry there. Nice tactical move there by Man 2. And there's that first cavalry unit goes in, look, and bang, as it smashes in there. And the second cavalry unit goes in as well, look, and bang, as that charges in as well. Nice tactical move there. And there you are, Man 2's other cavalry units are now charging in as well, look, and bang, as they smash in there as well. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Great move there by Man 2. Good supporting move there. And you'll notice I'm charging my cavalry back in as well. There you can see them charging, trying to take the berserkers out there. And bang! And my cavalry charging there. As I say, Man 2's brought a couple of his infantry units over as well to help out. Oh my gosh, look at the berserkers there. Look at the odds that they're fighting, and they're still fighting. Make no mistake, these fully upgraded berserkers will fight to the last man. And I can see the last man fighting, and he's just been taken out. So those fully upgraded berserkers fought to the last man there. Oh my gosh, but we have now taken out the entire Germania army there. I think all the Germanic army has now been taken out. So that's good news for us. So that's really good news for us there. And you can see that the Julio General's cavalry, those fully upgraded cavalry units, have been greatly weakened as well. 
So that is good news for us. You'll see Luke taking his Brutii infantry over towards the woods there. And over here you'll see that Luke and um, the Macedonian general there are mopping up um, routed units there, making sure they're not going to rally. Okay, so that's always a good move, remember. Make sure that you chase down routing troops so they don't rally and come back and bite you in the butt. Okay, so here you can see Titan Spitfire got his Macedonian army set up quite nicely there. But as I say, with us taking out all of the Germanic army, that's good news for us. But my army has been greatly weakened by that um, attack there that I, my army sustained. Meanwhile, over here you'll see that Vicox is attacking those two Macedonian pike units there. Whether those pike units will want to fight or just up spears and run, that's maybe what they may want to do. Remember, Carlton's sacred band spearmen punch above their weight when it comes to the big 121-man units. And I say, nice support there by Man 2 and Vicox in supporting my army against those massive attacks that were coming in on me there. So, a great bit of teamwork there by Vicox and Man 2. Let's say you can see the Julii army there, uh, ready to move in. And as I say here, you can see the Macedonian general. Now, he's actually moved forward and he's moved into a bit of a dip there. So we've got the higher uh, ground advantage there. It might be better for him to pull back onto the higher ground. What uh, I've got left of my infantry here, I'm facing the Julii infantry and cavalry there coming in onto man two's fresh units there that's all the cavalry i've got left there that you can see uh, i think one unit just got two cavalry in the other one's got seven cavalry in. so i've really lost a lot of my cavalry in this battle and you can see the julia infantry there moving towards man two's infantry if you notice the Julii infantry is all in open order to suffer less casualties from pilers. But if you notice there, you'll see that Man 2's infantry are not in open order. So pilers are going to damage his units a lot more. Remember, units that in close tight formation like that will suffer more damage. But Man 2 decides he's going to attack. And Scorpion King's cavalry is going in there as well. Great combination attack as that cavalry smashes in there and bang as it smashes in there. So the infantry of Man 2 and the cavalry of Scorpion King there, straight into the enemy Julii army. Great combination attack there, really well done. You can see uh, Luke bringing a couple of his Brutio units there over, cavalry units there to charge into our SBQR units, and bang, as they charge in there. But it wouldn't surprise me if he backed off that, that last Brutio unit, which he's done. He can't save his teammate there. So, um... The enemy Julia army has basically been destroyed there. I think there's one unit left. There you go. One unit left. So we've taken out the Germanic army and we've taken out the Julia army here. So we've done very well, I think, at this stage of the battle. Now, as I said, the Macedonian general was on lower ground there, but now you can see the Macedonian general has decided to move on to the higher ground by the side of the rock and looks to me like he's going to form up a defensive formation there. So it'll be interesting to see how well he does that. But meanwhile here I think we've just finished off the last of the Julii infantry. So what we need to do now I think, I think the Macedonian general is going to go defensive. So what I think we need to do now is to hunt down the Brutii army of Luke. They are all of... Uh, the Julii army, as I say, has now been taken out. So what I think we need to do now is to hunt down, as I say, the Brutio army of Lukes. Uh, as I say, the Macedonian general, you can see there, has gone into a defensive formation there. As I say, Vicox may well fancy his chances with his Carthage Sacred Band against the Macedonians, but with the Macedonians on higher ground there i don't think it would be a good idea for vicox to attack with his car through sacred band there because of the height advantage that those macedonian pikes have got and of course don't forget those macedonian pikes are a lot longer than the short spears of carthage so um it might be worthwhile vicox waiting for his spq or allies to come over to help him there rather than attack on his own possibly but as I say, now I think for our team, 
the best thing that we can do now is hunt down the Brutii army of Lukes. Take them out because they're the only attacking force now that the Macedonian troops have gone into defensive mode. We need to take out, I think, as I say, the Brutii troops here of Lukes. And if we advance forward all together there, I think that might be a, a good thing to do. But over here, you can see Vicox has decided to attack. But if you notice there, straight away, he is attacking uphill. Okay, straight away, you'll see he's attacking uphill. Now, he may well have seen that the Macedonian pikes were put up there. Um, and he may well have tried to charge in under the pikes, if you see what I mean, before they could put the pikes back down. But... Um, Unfortunately for him, you'll see that the pikes have come back down and he is now fighting uphill. And that's never a good thing to do <clears throat> against pikes is fight uphill. And if he's not careful, he could lose a lot of his units there. You'll see Scorpion King bringing some cavalry over here. But you'll see that um, Titus Spitfires really kind of tightening up his battle formation there. That defensive formation there. And I think Vicox, if he's not careful, he's going to lose a lot of his troops um, attempting to attack up that slope okay so you can see man 2 bringing some infantry over here to help Vicox there if you notice here can you read the writing concerned because the general has fled the battlefield some of you may never have seen that before but if you read the writing concerned because the, their general has fled the battlefield so um, you know obviously that affects their morale there with the general um, leaving the battlefield so as I say um, I don't know whether you've ever seen that before but uh, of course like I say the general gives a good morale bonus but if his troops see him flee, uh, flee from the battle it does lower their uh, morale I would think and here you'll see um, as I say Luke's got the aggressive attacking army here as his teammate as we've just seen is in defense mode so like i said really best to just leave macedon there um forming up in that defense mode and we all start hunting down the brutio army there right you can see here going for luke's infantry as i say for me the achilles heel of both the julio army and luke's army here is just having seven infantry that to me is a real achilles heel because the moment anything with more units advances towards them the only thing they can do is back off but here as i say you can see spitfire is really um kind of beefing up that defensive formation there i can see a lot of carthage dead spearmen that died trying to attack uphill you'll see a lot of pilots being thrown in to the macedonians here so that's good news for us try and weaken them um with casualties from pilots before we get into hand-to-hand -hand fighting and remember, our Roman troops got to fight all the way down those massive pikes to kill the man on the other end. And that uh, that does take some doing there. Here you can see uh, Scorpion King's cavalry was routed. They've rallied now, which is good, but they were routed there. And you can see the Brutii cavalry of Luke's moving over towards his Macedonian ally now. What I'm thinking here is I'm wondering whether they're thinking of a hammer and anvil attack. I'm wondering whether the Macedonian pikemen are going to come out of defense mode and attack those SBQR Roman troops while Luke crashes into the rear of them with his cavalry. Let's see if that's what the tactic is going to be here. I just think the Macedonian general is going to come out of defense mode and attack the SBQR infantry as Luke piles in behind that SBQR infantry. It'll be interesting to see if that what uh, if that's what their team is going to do there. There you are. You can see Luke's cavalry is definitely locked and loaded, ready to charge in. Right there you are. Can you see the Macedonian general has now come out of defence mode and is doing a hammer and anvil attack. His Macedonian infantry are going to be the anvil, and they're hoping that Luke's cavalry is going to be the hammer. You see what I mean? Hammer and anvil attack onto Mantu's SBQR infantry there. That's what I think they planned there. Now, it'd be interesting to see if this is going to work, because that could rout all of Mantu's army as well. Meanwhile, over here, I think all of Luke's infantry has now been taken out. As you can see there, I think basically all of his infantry has now been taken out. But I wonder if he left them there to keep our troops over there attacking those infantry well he was him and spitfire here planning as i say 
may be a battle winning hammer and anvil attack but our Carthage ally there has spotted it look and bought his cavalry his anti-cavalry spearmen in between Luke's and Mantu's army but here you are you can see Luke's got a couple of cavalry units in behind um, our troops there like a bang as he smashes in there oh my gosh just look at that for impact and penetration with his cavalry he's probably all to attack there using his heavy swords instead of the spear instead of those light spears there there you are you can see the damage that he's doing there to our Espicure alloy in combination there you are you can see them using heavy swords there both those units have been routed but he did a lot of damage there in combination with his Macedonian alloy so that was a nice hit there by Luke with his cavalry there and you can see now we're really hard pressed against those Macedonian um, pikes so what we need to do over there after taking out Luke's infantry is move all our infantry here and what I'm going to try and do is get behind those engaged pikes there but uh, make no oh look at that for a nice cavalry hit there by Titans um, Spitfire great move there with his cavalry and pikes so well done to Spitfire I think he's doing extremely well as I say, I've seen him play with Macedon before, and he is very, very good with the Macedonian faction. And as you can see here, he's showing how good he really is. I think that's the Macedonian general's just been taken out. Well, of course, we know Macedon morale is not very good, so for his general to be taken out, that's bad news for them, but good news for us. But you can see that those Macedonians have caused us a lot of casualties there. And as I say, what I'm looking to do is get behind those um, engaged Macedonian pikes with my infantry and cavalry if I can you can see Vicot's got a couple of his sacred bear spear units in behind there but just look at how well those Macedonian pikes are doing the micromanagement there and the quick reactions very very important with the, the big pike factions there and you can see quick reactions really good micromanagement there of his units but here you can see we've got some cavalry here ready to lock and load and charge in. I'm thinking as their general's dead, that cavalry charge could finish them off. They're a bang as it goes in there. They already got a combined cavalry and infantry attack on those Macedonian pike units there. As I say, with their general gone and their morale very low, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a mass rout of those units. Luke has already um, admitted defeat there with his army and it wouldn't surprise me if the Macedonian general did the same there you are Macedonian generals just admitted defeat as well so our team has um has managed to go on to uh, to win the battle there so um <clears throat> that's uh, that was quite uh, quite lucky for us there it's quite a spread out battle now over here this is where my army got smashed and crashed by all those Germanic troops plus the fully upgraded Julii cavalry coming in on me as well. But with great support from Mantu and Vicox, my army managed to hold. But look at all that SBQR cavalry and infantry dead there. I mean, you can see, uh, oh my gosh, my army there really did take a smash in there. Over here, I think this is where we attacked the Julii army and finished off all the Julii units there. Let's say, if you look over the battlefield, you can see casualties everywhere. Like, if we look over here, look, you can see more dead there. Looks like cavalry skirmishes here. You move across the battlefield. Everywhere you look, look, you can see where there's been skirmishes going on. Little battles within the battle there. Just look at that. As I say here, and then we managed to, um, to, to win the battle over here. But uh, it was a tough battle, this one. As I say, this is um, only maybe the second or third time we've ever played on this custom map. And the feedback that I get from it is pretty good, so pleased about that. And as I say there, you can see the um, Macedonian army is, uh, as I say, they've uh, admitted defeat there. But here, as I say, if you just look across the battlefield there, you can see the casualties suffered there by um, our SBQR allies there. So... The first thing I would like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. I thought everybody played well, guys. Great battle on this custom map. Um, as you can see, it was an average victory there. So uh, it's pretty good. I thought it might have been close, so we did quite well. Highest kills in the game goes to Brotherhood Member Man 2. 
1,655 kills. So really well done to Mantu. Good aggressive attack there. A well done to Titan Spitfire. A shout out for him there with his Macedonians. Got some really good kills there. And like I say, the micromanagement, the fast reactions there with Macedon. Really well done. Well done to Luke. He'll be a bit disappointed. He got less than 1,000 kills. But he was very aggressive, very attacking there. So, uh, so well done to Luke. Well done to uh, Amanda there. Um, got more than a thousand kills, so did very well there. And well done to Cornovo. Probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there, but he was very aggressive with his old Germanic army. So uh, well done to him. So well done, guys. Great battle. Thought you all played really well. Um, my kills, well, because I was smashed and crashed and very defensive, didn't get very good kills there, less than a thousand. So, um, but uh, with great support from my allies, my army managed to hold. So I'm quite pleased with that there so it wasn't too bad there so um yeah it was okay i wanted a scorpion king got some good kills very aggressive right from the start of the battle and well done to man to say highest kills in the game and well done to vicox with his carthaginians i thought he played very well good micromanagement good tactical moves there with his carthaginians so anyway i hope you enjoyed this battle on this custom map as i say i've got some good feedback from this map people seem to enjoy it so we'll be playing more battles on it anyway this is spartan commander saying bye for now and see you soon